Heading abroad for a wedding, my husband's accusatory tone took me aback. And you call yourself a wife, he sneered. His words stung, casting a shadow over what should have been a joyous occasion. It's not a vacation, I retorted, attempting to explain. I'm attending a wedding ceremony, but my explanation only seemed to enrage him further. Shut up, he snapped. You're married, you shouldn't leave the house. Do you want to get a divorce? The person I once knew as my gentlemanly husband had transformed into someone unrecognizable. Being bored even from celebrating with my best friend felt suffocating, like being enslaved. I reached my breaking point. Look forward to it, okay? I fired back, my frustration boiling over. I'll send you straight to hell in no time. My name is Emily, 29 years old. Two years ago, I took a leap of faith, leveraging my experience from working part-time during my student days to become an independent entrepreneur. Despite the initial struggles of starting my online boutique, my boyfriend Nick's unwavering support kept me going. He believed in my dreams, even when I doubted myself. You'll be fine, he'd reassure me with a smile. Even if things are hard now, there will surely come a time when you'll succeed. Nick's encouragement became my lifeline, propelling me forward through every setback. I want to support you, Emily, he'd say, his faith in me unwavering. Let's try a little harder together. With Nick by my side, I found the strength to persevere. So, despite the challenges, I made the decision to continue running my shop, knowing that with Nick's support, anything was possible. I fully utilized social media networks, SNS, to market my business in the gaming niche, which resulted in a significant boost in online exposure. Thanks to this strategy, I witnessed a remarkable increase in the number of customers. My target demographic spans a wide age range, ensuring a large user base for my business. Since everything operates online, I'm spared the cost of rent and labor. This setup allows me to manage my business seamlessly alongside household chores without feeling overwhelmed. With stability achieved, I now enjoy a decent income. However, amidst the success, one thing troubles me deeply, my husband's growing indifference towards me. As my business flourished, his words and actions turned colder by the day. I traced the beginning of this rift back to a seemingly inconsequential incident a few months ago. Upon reaching my sales target for the previous month, I was elated. I rushed to share the news with my husband, Nick, who had just returned from work. Nick, listen, I began excitedly. What's the rush? You seem worked up, he replied. I did it. I hit my sales target for last month. You set quite a high goal, he remarked casually. Yes, we've been close for a while, but I finally achieved it last month. I couldn't have done it without your support. Thank you, I expressed gratefully. Ah, good for you, Nick responded, his tone indifferent. I'm tired today. I'm going to take a shower and head to bed. With that, he left his bag on the sofa and retreated to bed without even touching the dinner I had prepared. I had anticipated his reaction given how supportive he had always been. So when I excitedly shared the news of reaching my sales target, I expected him to share my joy. Yet his response was lukewarm at best. Was he simply tired? I wondered. I had hoped for a celebratory moment between us, making his subdued reaction all the more surprising. Despite my disappointment, I could have compelled my weary husband to fiend happiness. As days passed, his demeanor towards me cooled gradually. Initially, I brushed it off as fatigue or a passing mood, but as weeks turned into a pattern of indifference, I grew uneasy. Soon, his disdain became palpable. Whenever I sat at my computer, he gloomed behind me, sneering as he peered at the screen. Checking your sales, he taunt, timing his interruptions deliberately, trying to show off how busy you are. Bewildered, I retort, it's not like that, Nick. You're the one who's been distant lately. His response pierced through me. Phew, it's exhausting, he sighed exasperation lacing his words. I trudged home exhausted from work only to be greeted by someone so emotionally charged. Emotional. Why do you always speak like that? I lament, hoping to share some good news. I've been trying hard, and you've always supported me. That's what pisses me off about you, he retorts sharply. I could have cared less about your sales. Try improving your housekeeping skills a bit instead of getting excited about such things. His words sting, and I try to reason, there's no need to talk like that. But he's relentless. Quit showing off how busy you are with work. Do it again, and I'm out of here. Got it? Feeling crushed by his harshness, tears begin to well in my eyes. 
Instead of offering comfort, he wears a sneering smile, a demeanor I've never seen before, a demonic grin that sends shivers down my spine. From that day on, his attitude deteriorates further. I'm no longer allowed the freedom to speak as I used to always tiptoeing around him, fearing his reaction. Then, a glimmer of light amidst the darkness. I find a wedding invitation for my best friend in our mailbox. Alina and I have been close since school days and her wedding overseas feels like a beacon of hope in my oppressive daily life. But before I can share the news, my husband discovers the invitation. What's this? He demands, his expression sour as he reads through it. You're not going right. Of course I'm going, I assert determined. With a devilish look, he slams his hand on the table. You are not, he growls, his voice ominous. I'm taken aback by his words, words I've never heard before. You've got to be kidding me, I manage to utter, stunned, while I'm working my butt off day in, day out. You're just lounging around at home on the computer, and you're planning on skipping housework again just because of a wedding. No, you've got it all wrong, I protest. That's not it. I just want to attend Elena's wedding. Shut up, he snaps, his tone cutting. We're married, you shouldn't leave the house. Do you want to get a divorce? The casual threat of divorce leaves me frozen in place. He continues his tirade mercilessly. I feel bad for your best friend too, if you're only using her wedding as an excuse to leave home and not to celebrate her marriage. What are you saying? I interject, frustration mounting. It's my best friend's wedding. I'm attending because I want to celebrate it. Just what's so hard to understand? Oh, you're so annoying, he retorts, his voice rising in anger. Quit being so cocky because your business took off. It's your attitude that ticks me off. When will you get it, huh? His shouting leaves me trembling, fear gripping me. My legs give way beneath me, and I find myself nearly nose to nose with him. Seemingly amused by my reaction, he continues, Look, you should be grateful. I married a woman like you. You were lucky your business took off, and it was only because of my support. Now, shut up and just do as I say. With a swift motion, he shoves the wedding invitation into the trash can. In that moment, my blood rushes back into my body, but it's not relief I feel. It's fury. He hadn't just discarded my dear friend's invitation. He had insulted my feelings. I was seething with bitterness. I bit down hard on my lip, realizing the resentment building inside me was unforgivable. Who did he think he was? Just because he despised me didn't grant him the right to control me. I was not his slave. Being his wife did not make me his possession. If my days were to continue like this, I decided I might as well be the one to disrupt it all. I didn't care anymore. I was attending Elena's wedding, no matter what. Without resistance, I quietly bided my time until the day of departure, meticulously planning my overseas trip to avoid detection. On the morning of the flight, my silent compliance seemed to have paid off. He was too preoccupied with his usual nagging at the front door to notice. Don't skip your chores today. Make sure dinner is ready. Don't you ever go against me, okay? He chided, oblivious to my plans. I know. Have a good day, I replied, masking my frustration. Phew, you've got it easy, don't you? You get to lounge around at home every day. I wish we could switch places. Yeah, I was the one who pushed you to have your own line, he retorted. I wish you were more grateful. Maybe I'll cut back my contribution to the household expenses from next month. It doesn't make sense for me to be the only one struggling. With every muttered grievance, my resolve hardened. Suppressing the urge to argue, I waited until he was out of sight. As soon as he left, I sprang into action. Grabbing the suitcase I had prepared, I called a cab and headed straight for the airport, leaving behind the suffocating confines of home. Upon arrival, Elena greeted me with open arms, but as I reached for my phone, it rang, displaying my husband's name. He must have realized I was gone, and his voice exploded with fury as soon as I answered. Hey Emily, where are you? He barked. Without even having dinner ready? I'm at Elena's wedding. I replied firmly. What wedding? He sneered. I told you not to go. You broke your promise, he accuses, his voice sharp with anger. I never said I wouldn't go. I also don't remember making such a promise. I retort calmly. Don't mess with me. I've disciplined you over and over not to leave home. You're my wife, after all, he asserts. Disciplined? What are you talking about? That's just you forcing me to put up with your selfish expectations. I counter, my defiance evident. Perhaps angered by my refusal to yield, he explodes. That's it. We're getting a divorce. Look, if you don't want that, come back home now. Got it. 
Without waiting for my response, he abruptly ends the call. But his ultimatum doesn't sway me. My mind is already made up. After my best friend's wedding, I spend a day sightseeing before returning home. I've been to have a talk with my husband, but he's nowhere to be found. Instead, I find divorce papers on the table, already signed, and that's not all. My work computer lies in ruins, smashed to pieces. It's a deliberate statement, a final act of retaliation, but there's no love left between us. I sign the divorce papers without hesitation, packing my things into my suitcase once again. With the papers in hand, I head to my parents' house. En route, I stop by the city hall and submit the divorce papers, sealing the end of our marriage. When I reached my parents' house, I laid out the whole ordeal for them. Initially surprised, their expressions hardened as they listened. If Nick had been there, my father would have surely taken action. As I settled into my childhood home, which I hadn't visited in ages, my phone rang. It was a call from my husband. I hadn't expected to hear from him so soon. Without hesitation, I answered, Hello. It's been a while, Emily. You're back in the country, huh? He remarked casually. I got back today. So what? I replied tersely. You're cold, huh? Oh, maybe you're shocked that I filed for divorce, huh? He continued, his tone condescending even over the phone. Relax, I'm not serious either. I just wanted you to reflect on yourself, so I gave you a little scare. Reflect on myself? What for? I retorted. You went abroad without my permission and had the time of your life, he accused. Attending Elena's wedding doesn't justify it. So you're persistent. That's what you mean by having the time of your life? Leaving your husband behind? Abandoning your housework? And going on an overseas trip? You're disqualified as a wife, you little chicken, he taunted. Enough already. Who do you think you are? Just because we're married, just because you're my husband, you think you have the right to control everything. I shot back, my frustration boiling over. I've had enough, Emily. Enough is enough, he exploded, his frustration palpable. In the end, you just can't stand that I'm successful at work, right? You don't like having a wife who earns more than you. You're such a deadbeat. It's pathetic to be jealous of your own wife. If it bothers you so much, go ahead and make more than I do. Emily, did you just say that? I'm seriously gonna break up with you, he threatened. Go ahead. In fact, we're already divorced. I fired back, my voice unwavering. What? I filed for divorce. There's no way I can continue being married to a piece of trash like you. Just so you know, if you think you can break me with such threats, you've got it wrong. I'm not gonna let you manipulate me. Don't ever show me that disgusting face of yours again, you jerk. He fell silent, evidently shocked by my harsh words. I seized the opportunity to end the call with a firm goodbye, before hanging up. Afterwards, I hired a lawyer and billed him for the desktop he destroyed. Moreover, the text and voicemail messages came in handy. His attempts to control my actions and his constant verbal abuse were proven, allowing me to collect damages. As a result, his savings dwindled, and he was left in debt. His parents refused to help him, saying it was his own doing, and he ended up having to borrow money from loan sharks. Now, he's stuck in a vicious cycle of borrowing to pay off debt, wandering in his own hell. He was never a high flyer, and I heard that he made mistake after mistake at work, eventually being sidelined. On the other hand, I've been living at my parents' home since the divorce. Thankfully, my current job doesn't tie me to a particular location. I can continue my peaceful life at home, and my parents are happy to have me stay with them. This lifestyle will likely continue for a while. Marriage isn't the only way to happiness. The most important thing is to have a family that cares for you. I've come to realize this once again.